Alright, welcome back to Let's Play Space Rangers 2, and I'm Ranger Malok on Planet Scott, ready to embark on another planetary quest of a more... It's kind of different now, because I'm going to be mingling with the royalties and whatnot, not going down to the uninhabited planet to track down a rogue pirate or something like that, but now I'll be able to brush up on my uh, charismatic skills, which Malok apparently has none of. As you can see here, oh not here, yeah he has no charisma but he somehow has to convince Tardim Kaboom the Maloc Prince to come to the planet, Feyan planet of all places. I think in this game Feyan and Maloc are the diametrically opposed race in terms of their character. One is very kind of timid and passive and one is just aggressive incarnate. Yeah I need to make it work so this is going to be a tall order, perhaps it's going to make a bit of a different scenario depends on who gave the quest, depending on the race that gave out the quest. I have to see, so uh, wish me luck, this is going to be pretty sweet. Alright, you arrived on the planet of Zgod early in the morning and landed your ship on the government place, government palace landing platform. Good beginning. Judging by the general air of excitement, the preparations for the reception of the Malak Prince were in full swing. Desperately trying to catch his breath, the Master of Ceremony ran over to you. Malak, your timing could be better. Looks like Prince Tardim Kaboom has changed his plans and arrived earlier than expected. A typical whim for the future successor though, he himself referred to this as a preliminary recon, with some trepidation. So the banquet will start in an hour. You must change your clothes and receive the instructions. The manager took you to the changing room. They had all kinds of goodness knows what there. Not the full defense combat spacesuit, not the Menzola coat of Fuakawa, but they had everything else, all sizes and colors too. So I guess also for uh, human size as well. Before you pick your suit, the manager suggested, I tell you everything I know about the prince and his family as well as about the order at the banquet. I think it would be better if you ask me questions and I will do my best to get the answers for you. Alright, so this is the um, first mission, text mission in a while that I will not face the consequences of being unceremoniously dropped off dead um, because the conditions here are only the, the prince's and his wife's uh, trust level and what you're dressed in and your money. Of course, yeah, the money comes in into effect. Yes, of course sort of guessed in it on a whim that it's going to be somehow important and it was. But we have to see. So why did the Scott government choose me? I think the Fan government chose me. There are several reasons for that. First of, first of you, uh, first you have been all over this galaxy and I'm sure you met Malox on more than one occasion so you must know a thing or two about their psychology. Yeah, I, I think I I think they are a space troll or a space orc. Secondly, the Malux praise nothing higher than valor and combat abilities and despise other races. This of course does not concern the rangers whom the Malux consider a special warrior case. And the prince is especially particular about these issues. As for the reason for us not to choose a Malux for an escort is the prince's wife, Hannah Gudik Kaboom. She has special interest in non-Malux cultures and is absolutely crazy about all things exotic. She orders her dresses from human tailors. Now that would be pretty a tall order. Her palace is furnished with Ganyan hardware and she uses weapons designed by the Feyans. Yeah, so much like going for designer clothes and iPhones and exotic medieval weapons or something. Or you know, just a mace. Uh, anyways, yeah, so it's not surprising she has that the escort and entertainer at the banquet should be of different race or another race. So we decided to turn to the services of a non malloc ranger thus satisfying the demands of both the prince and his wife. But as it turned out after we concurred with the guest, we got the reverse effect. Prince Tardim is full of skepticism and is absolutely sure that a non Malak cannot possibly be a true warrior while his wife thinks all the rangers are dull martinets. Oh dear. Unfortunately, it is already too late to make any changes. Yes, yeah, so this is a bit of a, a pickle that they find themselves in. Uh, so I need to make sure that the rangers are not dull and that we are a warrior that can measure up to the Malloc's impression or Malloc's expectations of uh, certain uh, fitness or certain abilities befitting their warrior caste. Yeah, so should I write this down? Uh, is this going to be another 
mission where I need to write things down. Oh boy. I should have guessed as much. So I'm back, writing down the particulars of Prince Tardim's characteristics. And he doesn't like other... Well, he doesn't trust rangers because they're weak. And the wife doesn't trust because they are dull. My goodness. How do they live with each other? Okay. Uh, why is the structure of the ceremony? The welcoming ceremony will be in true Malak tradition. This is a city event. You will be entertaining and escorting the envoys. First, there will be the meeting of the embassy where you will simply greet the prince and his family. Okay, meeting at the embassy. After that, you have to lay the table right in front of the prince. Traditionally, the table is not laid in advance. Then, lay the table. Alright, so I need to remember that probably. There will be followed by first meal, where you will serve the dishes and service the guests at the table. The first course for Malak is simply about eating. All the dishes will be of Malak cuisine, so don't even think about taking anything from the prince's table or you'll die. Yes, so the great ranger can die here. I was wrong. Mark it. The Malaks eat a lot and not very accurately. It's going to be pretty a mess. It's the first meal. No touching or no looking. Just get out of the room after serving the meal. After the first course comes the time for the conversation. Casual talk about irrelevant subjects. Normally this is the time to praise their feet. Remember the Malaks hate lies, they only slightly dramatize and detail their doings. Hmm, they hate lies, I see. So no embellishment, but it might sound dull, because all Malak did in the past episodes are just flying around the galaxy and doing nothing, just spying stuff. Maybe the wife will be interested, but I'm not so sure. Then comes the time of the gift, or simply drinking. The Malak civilization was born in desert, which is why they consider beverages of all kinds an especially valuable gift. As you know, alcohol is officially banned on Malak planet, so good to know that. Okay, gift. Or drinking. Okay. But this is only to avoid competition to the local manufacturers. Officers and higher command will normally drink some alcohol, and the soldiers as well often have this weakness. They hanker after the forbidden fruit, and with the kind permission of the prince, the table will be served with the rarest and most valued Malak drinks. Before that, it is completely useless to even try to talk business with the prince. He simply wouldn't listen. Alright, so prince needs to drink to talk. Needs drink to discuss matters. Alright. The libation will be followed by the gift exchange. We have already pick the gift for you, so you only have to present them. So that's a freebie, so there's going to be a bit of a reset button. If you're in a bit of a trouble or need that leg up to gain the trust, this will put you over the edge. And finally comes the time for the epulation of mind, where a very special dish is reserved and where you can finally talk about business. Remember, the prince is not here as your guest but as an envoy, and it's highly unlikely that he will want to talk to you unless you make a good impression. So this is Epulation of Mind, Special Dishes, and Talking Business. Probably these dishes will be infused with alcohol of some kind. Talking Business. Alright, okay, so when the banquet is over, the embassy will be taken on a sightseeing tour about the capital. Here you will not be needed as a servant, so this will be the best time for your mission. You must invite the prince to come to the planet of Aif on a friendly visit. If he agrees, your mission is accomplished. Okay, so then cordial invite for the prince to come to that fan planet who he probably is going to regret after. Alright. Tell me about Prince Tardim. Oh my god, this wall of text. Goodness. But if I want to succeed, I need to read and narrate. 
The prince himself was born to the family of famous warriors, like a warrior case, who have been occupying the throne of his native system for several generations already. Most obviously, himself also followed the path of a warrior, the young son of Emperor Van Dal. Van Dal, Van Dam. He did not disappoint his father and very quickly made an excellent military career, earning himself the respect and pride of the entire Malak race. His alliance with Hanna was considered to be a very sophisticated political move. Tardim himself is not too rough and straightforward, he is incapable of design or intrigues. Kind of simpleton, well, in a bad way, but straightforward in a good way. This Tardim guy seems to be a stand up guy so far. Uh, while Hena not only distinguished herself in battles, but also made herself a name as a brilliant negotiator, delicate by Malak's standards, of course, and well educated. Hannah goes where the space fleet and sharp swords become obsolete. In practice, the prince is already completely in charge of his planet's exterior affairs and commands a larger part of the armed forces, so Hannah's help couldn't be of better use. So why is this guy talking about the wife and the rest about the prince? But at least I know that she's a negotiator and they fit each other pretty well like hand in glove. Prince Tardy Carvoom is of those Malaks who value honesty. Okay, values honesty, decisiveness, okay, he did not like me at all, probably kicked me out of the army, and strength, which is why he dislikes the <laughs> which is why he dislikes the lying pelings, huckster humans, weakling feyans, and the ever doubting galleons. The prince despises Malak merchants and pirates even more. Wow, okay, cool, so dislikes other races. Generally, okay. What did he think about the humans? Hawkster? Well, I guess hopefully uh, Melog is going to change his mind. Also hates pirates. Oh. Um. All right. They would often turn to their services through stooges, so do not be surprised if you're treated with distrust or called a wonky. A wonky. It is the strong belief of the prince that a non melo cannot be a good fighter and that all other races are mean and lying. The prince is very moody, and his attitude would change from sincere amiability to grim irritation. Temper. Like any melo, he has a lot of respect for true warriors. Besides, he is very honest and straight as an arrow and values the same qualities in others. If he does not like someone, he will tell them straight to their face and from time to time may even give that same face a good punch. At which point, the Green Ranger is gonna die. He is prepared to do everything for a friend, and his best friend is his wife. He also loves his sons beyond anything, and they are truly their father's children. Born and bred fighters and children. So I can probably compliment on their fighting prowess and their eligibility to become a ranger. Alright, how about the prince's wife? Alright, thankfully this is wall of text doesn't go beyond the first screen. Princess Hannah de Kaboom, Theodem Crunch looks killer, was born in the family of a technician. When she received her right to bear arms, she swore to become a famed warrior, and she managed to. Back in the military school, no one could match her when it came to sword and laser repair fighting. She won the annual fencing tournament. When she was noticed by a close friend of the monarch in power who offered her the position of the fencing instructor to the emperor's son. Okay. So perhaps she's senior to Kaboom. Several years ago, her native system was suddenly attacked by the invaders, who destroyed the system's entire space fleet and part of the ground forces in one devastating strike. Hannah took over the command and led by her, the remains of the army were holding the planet, right until the arrival of Prince Tardim's personal guards, who were hailing back from an anabasis. The system was liberated and the prince personally hailed the valorous defenders. Princess Hanna was granted the Order of the Kurd Blaster for Valor and the Order of Black Ears for her hatred of for the enemy. Hmm, Black Ears, huh? During the over ceremony, the prince proposed to his former fencing instructor to become his sister-in-arms, which is the male equivalent of a human marriage proposal. Now they have two children whom Hanna loves beyond anything. As I already mentioned, yeah, okay, yeah, he already mentioned when describing the prince. And it shows a lot of interest in studying the potential allies. The interest in other races. Okay, pretty interesting. I wonder if I was a Malak Ranger, I wouldn't have gotten this mission. 
To her, they are one, they're attractive exotics. She is simply looking for new and unusual experiences, expanding her mental outlook, where she thinks her normal environment to be colorless and dull. Initially, the prince strongly opposed, but she studied the psychology of other races very well and became an unmatched diplomat. So now, Tardin pay little attention to this weakness of hers, which is close to madness. What can you say about Malox in general? In fact, I know very little of them. <laughs> so I guess it's not really important to the... It's just a little flavor text to make it more interesting. World building and lore. The Malak race was born on a hot planet, the majority of which is desert. Throughout each development, the Malak civilization was constantly at wars with climate, hollow monsters inhabiting the desert and each other. Most naturally, with an environment like this, they have soon grown a cult of strength and the natural selection process made excellent warriors out of them. Kinda reminds me of uh, not only the orcs, but also the Krogans of Mass Effect series. Uh, in these conditions of Lex, Talionis' reflexes and raw power became more important than intellect and knowledge, which is why scientists and support workers are the lowest of the Malak caste. Oh dear. They have no cultural values or events whatsoever, save for numerous competitions and military parades. The Malak customs and tradition cause nothing but disgust among the races. For instance, did you know that to greet each other, they would often exchange punches? An awful habit. Okay, greeting is a punching contest. My goodness, that is not going to go well for Malak. The structure of the Malak society is very simple. They admire one's combat skills beyond anything else, and thus their highest case star officers and vets. Then come soldiers, then military medics and technicians. The rest such as workers, peasants, scientists, journalists, and other scum are despised by Malak warriors and tolerated merely because of the fact that life without them is a bit more difficult. I wonder why, they would probably offer more opportunity to fight. To do them justice, I must say the case ship is dependent primarily on the individual qualities of a Malak. Even a simple technician may become an officer if he demonstrates valor and courage. Like a general son may become a useless adjunct if he is no good for anything else. So okay, that's something that I admire about them. Alright, let me pick my suit finally. Okay, you approach a huge wardrobe which as it seemed to you, contains everything that may be needed to make the necessary impression on the high-ranking couple. What do you prefer? Put on a magnificently scenting, fashionable jacket decorated with precious stones. Put on a tuxedo. Put on a butler suit, like all the other servants. Stay in your space suit. Put on a set of light armor. Put on a strangely designed suit made of belt, sheets, and sword belt. Oh. I like the exotic stuff. Let's try to gain the trust of the wife. Alright, truly, now you are prepared to meet the dear guest. Although you never understood where exactly this way of meeting the guest would be considered proper. But that does not matter. You still have some time to develop some sort of a plan, but planning isn't really your strongest point. Remember the times when you hit the ground running, fire a couple of missiles right in the face of the nearest telaroid, ascend to the sun, and give a volley to some fresh ranger. These are my remains, I broke the off the dominator. And if you as much poke your nose into them again, your own remains will follow. Alright, tough cut a long story short, you decided to act upon the situation and spent the rest of time available hanging about with no specific purpose. Specifically to honor the dear guest, the palace was decorated in the Malak fashion. The majority of rooms were finished with pieces of wallpapers a la cave. Luck was on your side. And miraculously, you wandered right into the kitchen where you had enough time to treat yourself to a bunch of delicacies for the total cost of your own ship with whole. What? Total cost of your ship? With holes packed with luxury items. Looks like they were planning to hold the galaxy's most capricious gourmet tournament here after the Metal Queens left. The cooks tried to drive you away from the food, but what a dozen of kitchen boys with scoops in their tiny hands could do against a blaster armed ranger. Samurai or not, you did take your weapons with you. Aside from the tasty and healthy food, you decide to get some useful information and stop the waiter who looked like one quick-witted and tricky pellant. Alright, aside from this, this text that I just read making not a whole lot of sense, <laughs> uh, this is another opportunity for me to gain or glean at least a bit of information before I get to meet the Prince Tardim and his wife. My brood man? I mean, Malog is not a pellant. Does this mission assume that I'm Peleng? Uh, yeah, let's just forget about it and then try to learn more information. 200. The Peleng responded and winked at you trickly. Nice to meet you. 200. And I'm Malok, so 
I just wanted to ask. 200, he repeated again. Yes, yes, I heard you. 200, but I need to ask you a question. No, you didn't hear me. My name is not 200. It's the answer to your question that is going to cost you 200 credits. Or you could settle for 100, but then the answer would be incomplete or too vague. Come on, hon. Cross my palm with silver, help good old Tegya Romerlik. What? You guessed. You gaped. Oh, bummer. I say if you want to get the answer, you have to pay and make it quick. I ain't got all day to stand and chat here with you. Let's civilized interracial market relations for you. You still have the time for one question, but what should it be? Oh, okay. So yeah, I need to spend some credits to make it more easier for me. And 200 credits is just not really a big amount of money, so I pay this guy. Uh, tell me how do I win over the Dominators? Hmm, this is not irrelevant to my interest right now, although it's very tempting. Ah, uh, yes, let's just ask this. What's the best way to greet the Malak Embassy? Say, Taiga, how do Malaks normally greet each other? The Panak snatched the money from you. When greeting each other, Malaks demonstrate mutual respect and power in accordance with the interlocutor's social status. Technicians, medics, and outstanding military scientists are traditionally greeted by a punch in the shoulder. Warriors are greeted with a punch in the jaw. And the stronger your jab is, the more respect you show for the strength of your counterpart, and the better you demonstrate your own strength. If a warrior is greeted as a technician, this will be considered an offense. It may serve as a cause for a duel. Uh oh. So, punch to the jaw. Okay. Strong punch to the jaw, that is. Okay, so run to the palace entrance to meet the prince. Oh boy. Soon the sound of the trumpet, or to be more exact, a uh, gobzaros with a sore throat and accompaniment of fighting pen penchek kriax announced the arrival of the envoy and his family. You wiped your hands on the suit of the butler who had the misfortune of pass you by and rushed to meet the dear guest. There could be no mistaking the Malak prince. He struck an eye like a drunk Malak at the poetic workshop of the Feyan Academy of Language Art. But that's what's going to happen if he goes to that Feyan planet. Uh, I'm going to invite him too. The suit of the Malak royal heir showed little sophistication and was made predominantly of belt and sword belt. Blaster battles gleamed carnivorously from each bolster and the belt shone with ammo. The array of cold weapons dangling off the prince by far exceeded the number of knives you've seen in the government palace kitchen. His personal ammo alone could have been sufficient to fire a salute celebrating the victory of the Dominators. Why would they celebrate the victory of the Dominators? Maybe over the Dominators? Then there will still be something left for seconds. The prince's wife was a bit shorter and more graceful than her beloved one. I wonder how Malak's female would be considered graceful in any type of attire or posture, but I'm just assuming things right now. Anyways, yeah, a beloved one that is. If you could possibly describe a wardrobe as graceful. Yeah, exactly. Her armory was also a bit smaller, although you still would have gladly taken a couple of those guns and installed them on your ship. As for her outfit, you stopped to pick your jaw from the floor. It was a real cocktail dress. Of course, it was tailored to fit her frame to human make, but the low cut and the numerous snow white laces which somehow remind you of bandages were in their place. Moreover, it was a tight fit and nicely showed off the prince's impressive muscles, protruding blaster handles and the sheath of her ritual sword. Two dark-skinned young Malaks who gloated at everyone, gripping the handles of their blaster guns accompanied the couple. They were of course real combat blasters just as all the other weapons they had. If only you had a dozen of guys like this under your command, and the Dominus microchips would melt at the mere sound of your name. Okay, as you understood, these were the prince's sons, the young Kabooms. Bring yourself together, you remember that you are supposed to meet and greet the guest. I have a feeling that Prince Tardim is not going to take too kindly to this narrator's description of all the uh, things that uh, is happening right now. Um, hide in the nearest dog hole and wait. Pull out your blasters and surprise the envoys with an unexpected appearance. Meet the Maluk envoys and switch properly. I choose the third option. Oh my goodness, despised. Well, Okay, I need to change that. You slowly approach the Maluk, accompanied by a suit of bodyguards, trying to keep your hands in clear view, but at the same time, showing that you are ready to draw your weapons at any given moment. This was the way to greet the envoys of a friendly planet, when the number of allied and peaceful agreements did not exceed 10, so you were instructed. As soon as you approached, Hannah turned to her husband, then you heard a deafening whisper. <laughs> deafening whisper. 
Imagine that, these rangers dress just like our soldiers, only half a dozen sizes smaller, and I was hoping to something interesting and usual. Boring. And I have seen all that at home too, so I accidentally dressed like a Malak soldier. Too bad. I kinda like it, Tarim responded. The guy or whoever it is under the armor looks great. At least I can be sure that blasters of this ranger know better than just hang from the posters. If all rangers look like that and if their valor matches their looks, then they are truly worth their glory. Hardin's response whisper shattered the bulletproof mirror glasses in the entire government house. Uh, greet the prince. Greet the metal princess. No, greet the prince first. Prince Tardin, what is it called? With a prince like that, his subject should have no fear of dominators. I mean, this guy could either go Zeros and ask for seconds and spit shut down a plane. And how did that old saying go? Uh, I don't know, but it must be a proverb. You carefully approach the prince fearing that something may explode or shoot from him any second. You did have a lot of experience with fighters but not the future rulers of an entire system. This is not your cup of coffee at the government house or a top secret coalition mission. With a bouncer like this, a handshake would be more appropriately referred to as hand hug and that still would be an understatement. Um, Okay, so slightly punch the prince on the jaw, or jab the prince full force on the jaw, maybe I should try this one. You remember the couple of instances where Malox would exchange punches to greet each other, allegedly demonstrating their strength and amiability. It's hard to imagine what friendliness has to do with the mighty jab, but according to the Malox traditions, a jab with an open hand was considered a sign of good and sincere intentions. Okay, so it's not a punch, but still jab is something uh, similar. Uh, similar kind of intention of goodwill. Take the handshake. He decided to follow the Malak tradition and jab the prince full swing in his teeth. The prince quacked in admiration and even squatted slightly. So strong was your blow. Meanwhile, you screwed up your face in pain. Something cracked loudly and you saw your hand swell. Ha, ah, brother warrior. I don't remember the last time somebody honored me like that. Looks like there still are real warriors left in this galaxy. So you chose the right way of reading. Wow, great, but it didn't change his relations. You honor me, stranger, and I shall return the favor. The prince started swinging his hand for a return punch, and you prepare to die the death of an idiot by the greeting of a foreign planet prince and an official reception of a foreign planet embassy. But apparently Tardin was aware of the delicate anatomy of other races and only gave you a slight backhand. Much to your own surprise and pride, you managed to keep your balance and only slid back a couple of meters down the floor. When the numbness finally left your face, you even managed to force a slight resemblance of a smile out of your aching features. However, the prince's wife looked at you disapprovingly. She did not think much of your attempt to act like a Malok. Uh oh. Okay, so you carefully approach... Okay, so that's how he, she looks like. Alright, so there's a cocktail dress with all the uh, weird equipment hanging from her uh, belt and whatnot. Alright, so let's... Let's go. You carefully approach Princess Hana Gede Kaboom. Who knows what if something falls off her toilet and right onto your foot, crippling you for life. Oh, a nice description there. Yeah, definitely uh, readies me for what kind of choices I'm going to make. Trying to think of a proper way of conduct with a princess. Or rather, the commander-in-chief of the ground forces of a whole planetary system. Or rather, two plus middle tall women are better than your spaceship. Um, well, I guess... I need to spit into the face of the princess and shriek widely. Um, okay. Ah, maybe I should be a gentleman. Looking around yourself, you spy the vase with flowers and pulled out a couple. Right. She's basically seeing you in the act. You found your face towards the princess, fell onto one knee, and presented the flowers to her with a gorgeous bow. Looks like the princess was totally delighted. She presented you with the effulgent skull took the flower, shoved it into her mouth and ate it, letting out a satisfied burp. Yeah, just like any other Malak lady would. I heard that some underdeveloped civilizations have this tradition of giving the guests some remarkable treat, and one should not refuse these, even if it's the last piece of meat in the house of the host. She explained knowingly to her frowning husband, but he only nodded dumbly. After all, you are not in the position of explaining the true nature of your gesture. I lead them to the banquet hall, so I guess that was... Uh, that could have been a bit better, but in the end, I think it was good for what it was. 
You enter the main banquet hall. There, the preparations for the reception have been completely ready. Tables were turned and greeted you with the gleaming of their polish. As expected, according to the Malak hospitality traditions, the tables were to be laid already at dinner. You seated the weapon dangling family down at the table for that you had been given very detailed instructions and paused. Now it was the time to lay the table. Most obviously, first of all, you had to serve the tableware, then fill the plate with food. Of those, you had a knife, fork, and a huge basin that was used instead of the plate. You desperately searched your memory for at least some traces of the court ceremonial, but somehow you could remember the rules of poker and recipes for cooking John well in zero gravity. Oh, very uh, useful tips to have when you're ranger and stuck in your hall for a number of days, if not months. Once again, you have to improvise. Considering the fact that Maddox hate nothing worse than hypocrisy, you have to serve both the prince and his wife in a similar way. Alright, I don't know what that has to do with hypocrisy, but maybe um, trying to patronize just because the Maddox princess is a female is going to cause very negative reaction. Okay, so... Um, this is pretty funny. Stick the fork right into the eye of Prince Tardim and laugh wildly. I don't think he's gonna take kindly to that. I mean, there is a, definitely a line that you cannot cross before uh, he punches your head off. Alright, so what was this? Lay the table. Uh, what did I write here? Uh, so I wrote not before. So lay the table not before. Okay. In the middle. Fork on the left. Put the base in the middle and stick both the knife and the fork into the table on both sides. <laughs> that might be a bit, I don't know, unique. Maybe the wife will like it. Put the basin down the table, put the knife in it, and still stick the fork into the back of the chair. Throw everything on the floor, let them know their place. Uh, this one? Prince Tardin watched your actions in bewilderment and was about to sound his indignation when the princess hushed him, explained that some of the more primitive tribes considered that they were born from Arch Mother Earth. That is why they would traditionally sit on the ground and even eat from the ground in order not to forget their origin, and Hana personally thought this tradition to be rather fun and mysterious. The Malak prince then loudly aired his opinion that he was very idiotic custom and proceeded to explain using popular soldier terms and expressions as to where you can shove your arch mother earth and as to what you should eat for dinner and supper. As for him, the prince boomed. He was intending to eat from the table like any civilized humanoid with clean tableware and having washed the hands too. Most obviously, you felt rather embarrassed under the puzzled and mocking looks of those present, and even the sympathizing and condoning smile of Princess Hana could not help improve your spirit. Okay, so that was pretty bad. Uh, okay, well, I mean, I wrote it down here, but I just... Well, maybe I wasn't really descriptive, so I'm going to try for a different option next time I have the chance to repeat this mission. <laughs> Already on a rather strange footing right now, so... Bring the first course from the kitchen. Now was the time to serve the Malak food. I rushed out into the dining room following the example of the servant. Taking the tray with strange brownish mass, which it seemed to you was still moving, you headed back to pick the appropriate drink for this course. There you were offered to choose from three options. Blood of the freshly killed habit, sour milk of canary yorkster, brownie juice squeezed out of the carnivorous skin flint mushroom. Okay, I don't know what these are, but uh, uh, all right, so let's read what these are about. While you were puzzling over the choices, one of the prince's sons entered the kitchen, stood there for a while contemplating and was about to leave. As you have already learned, the sons were still to get their true names, although they already had earned themselves aliases. So far, they were using temporary names. Coffee Coon, Grim Nose, and Taffy Cack, Three Green Muscles. Okay, so there was a bit of a... Uh, I don't know whether that information is going to be useful, maybe, but I'm not so sure. So, Alright, so let's buy the info. Yeah, let's spend money. Noticing a Pelang Noah who was passing you by, you weighed the bundle of credits invitingly. Hey, you! 200, come over here. Sega Romerlich materialized right in front of you and glanced knowingly at the tray with drinks. Choices, choices, eh? He asked, seizing the money out of your hand. Can you help? Sure, I did take the money already. I seen Tardium steadily pull at his flask, which by the way was almost empty, judging by the smell it contained fresh blood of some animal. As for Princess Hana, of all the non malak drinks, she only takes milk and juice of exotic fruits. And although the Yorkster milk has been traditionally drink of nomad Malaks for several thousand years already, still the yesterday papers mentioned that she is absolutely crazy about this milk. Uh, yeah, let's take the sour milk. 
Right, okay, so that worked. You carefully placed the glasses on the tray, took the plate with the salad in your other hand, and left the kitchen. When you put the glasses with milk in front of Malox, the prince sighed sadly. Don't you just hate etiquette? Why is it that at any reception they will serve you this sour? I mean, why not cater a warrior to a glass of fresh blood? I blast so much myself in battles that you could probably fill a small lake with my blood. I need to get a refill, you know? I mean, what happens if the enemy riddles me with bullets and sees no blood? Or worse, what if they see me spurt this yuck instead of blood? They split their sides with laughter. You tried to argue that the dominators were robots and had no understanding of the notion of laughter and that all liquids were then qualified into one of the three categories, fuel, lubricant, and waste. But the prince waved you into silence. Well, I guess you're speaking up, trying to, uh, you know, trying to converse with the prince, but he's having a none of it. Saying a couple of meaningless toasts, about honor, valor, and strength, as well as about the enemy scalps and polystrone brains smearing the butt of a rifle of a confederation soldier, the prince officially opened the banquet, then all who could still bear the look of the food after his toast got down to eating. Okay. So I guess the wife, really, there's no mention of the wife, but uh, apparently she liked this, so yeah. Yeah, relation to you are normal. So I guess if I keep this level, maybe if I invite them, then they will be more likely to accept the invitation. So what should I do here? Uh, maybe I should leave, right? No touching. Yeah, so let's just say, um, stand between the prince and his wife and wait till the first course is over. Stand behind the prince and wait till the first course is over. Stand to the side of the prince and wait till the first course is over. Crawl under the table and wait till the first course is over. Let's crawl under the table. On face, you crawl under the table and let out a sigh of relief. However, already the next instance you regretted your own stupidity. The massive legs of the Malak Prince not only look terrible, they also smell terrible. Of course, you remember that Malaks live in dry desert and treat water with trepidation, never wasting the precious moisture on such things as washing. Somehow this did not help much. How did that Malak saying go, dirt less than a centimeter thick is not dirt? And when it is thicker, it becomes additional protection from small arms. Okay. But now your absence did not escape the attention of Princess Hanaka Boom, and feeling worried for you, she tried to crawl under the table to check you out. <laughs> wow. Most naturally, a 200kg carcass would never have fit under the small table, no matter how much she wanted. The table levitated menacingly, and half of the pledge slid racing against each other to opposite side, unable to avoid law of gravity. Having found out that you were alright, the princess crawled back from under the table, pulling you out as well. Much to your own terror, you understood that, unlike you, the diplomats who sat at the other end of the table were not alright. Part of the pledge finished on their heads, decorating the frowning officials with intricate laces of salad and shrimp legs. Unfortunately enough, the whole thing seemed awfully funny to the princess and her sons, and your reputation was saved. We know the prince and other malachs continued stuffing their armored stomach with meat salad and other delicacies, some of which were still moving. Oh jeez, and some reeked so much that it would have been better if they were still moving. Wow, yeah, some horrible picture they're painting, but fortunately, uh, my little misadventure down under the table of the banquet helped amuse the princess. Didn't affect the prince that much, so I guess that was a pretty good choice. Continue. Meanwhile, the guests started a casual conversation. Everyone wanted to tell something extraordinary that happened to them. If one should really believe that Malox never lie, then at least every fifth of them personally interrogated Mark Pella some 300 years ago, and just recently liberated a couple of star systems from the Dominators, armed with a knife and a handful of Malox swear words while coming back from a morning jog. I think a jazzy uh, hoodlum did have a, a certain mouth on him that I couldn't really ignore um, in my attempt to assassinate that <laughs> Malox pirate. Uh, anyways, you remembered your own failed attempt at liberating certain star systems and came to the conclusion that when it came to matters of this kind, the Malak Sewer Wards were apparently much more efficient than the Pelang or Guardian ones. In the meantime, the discussions became pretty heated, and somebody was already modeling slippers made out of Mark Pella's skin. What skin are these folks talking about? You are not an expert in the history of the Clisson War, but you knew it for the fact that Clissons had no skins, although there were times when you sold the Clisson hooves and horns to the naive memorabilia collectors. Maybe it was time for you to join the conversation. Alright, so what can I say to them? They would make them, uh... Like, right, they'll satisfy both the prince and the princess. Tell them about your scalp collection that you took from most errant thugs and pirates of this galaxy. 
tell them how you captured the super mega brain of the dominators and subjected it to cruel torment. Tell us about the order you cut out for yourself with a blaster from Terence Hall. Remember a romantic story of your feelings towards a princess who had been kidnapped by a hyper pirate. Tell them how much tribute you have collected from the merchant over the past months and how many you killed at that. So this is not going to be very good because he hates pirates. Uh, so I guess, you know, uh, Maddox do not like any lies or embellishments in the stories, but it seems like most of them are, you know, there are so many of examples of tall stories and unbelievable feats of strength that the Maddox delve in that uh, I think the prince had uh, become rather tired of those and had begun to dislike them or distrust them. But I don't think I have any uh, stories where I can show my honesty of what I have done and what I have done to earn that ranger hero status. Um, well, what can I choose? Uh, well, he hates pirates, right? And Princess is more kind of exotic. Um, she likes those kind of stories probably of a person that is of a similar situation being in the, I guess, center of a certain adventure told by a dashing a young ranger, so I choose this one. Oh, okay, so Distrust by Prince, of course. That is, uh, I should have expected that to happen. Already halfway through your exciting story, the Malak started yawning wildly, demonstrating their indifference. Somebody asked you how many victims and blasted stars were there to appear in the story and received a totally disappointing for him and received a totally disappointing for him answer. In the end, your only listener was Princess Hanakaboom, who was completely all that your unlikely fable, full of romanticism and sensual scenes. Okay. Amazing, she gasped, and when your story ended. This is indeed a very beautiful and romantic story, which one would never hear from our males, who would only brag about how many enemies they killed and captives took. Soon all the stories were told, all dishes and fingers looked clean. The guests were just starting to get warmed up and demanded to shift over to thicker meals and most of all stronger drinks. Those who were previously catered to the Malak wine became especially loud. You cheered together and everyone else demanding the party to go on. Mashed eggplant served and the Zarina brought to your bedchamber. Wow. Alright, bring the strong drinks and relevant food. The race of alcoholic and conditionally alcoholic drinks was quite impressive, and that was not counting the aldehyde and alkali cocktails that you recognized by their characteristic smell. Now your opinion of the Malux has grown tenfold. What kind of crap one has to get to be eating to drink those together with it? It is generally considered the ultimate fighting. No one can match the palings at large distances and when they start spitting their acidic saliva. Wow, they have acidic saliva attack. So apparently a drunken Malux could. What do they make toilet bowls of, I wonder, and what does this have anything to do with the quest in question? This time you decided not to puzzle over the choices and bring everything that burns and dissolves plastic and could be at the same time taken for a drink as a malloc. Since the end number of vessels was quite large, you decided to borrow one of the carts that a passing by waiter was holding somewhere. Um, alright. Offer him 200 credits as rent for the cart and promise to be careful with it. Uh, use the principal ancient conqueror Caesar, divide and snatch, threatening the waiter with your blaster. Show him your bloodshot eyes, starting producing foam from your mouth, in short, put some psychological pressure on the guy. Backhand him right in the ear just for the kicks of it and hint that his face could suffer a lot of damage from Mr. Iron Tray there. Posture on the floor, licking his feet, begging him to let you take a ride on this modern technology wonder. Oh boy, I just offered him 200 credits. Alright, without taking his time to drink, the cook agreed and took the money. Huxer, the disgusting voice of the Malak Prince and Commander-in-Chief, or vice versa rather, came from behind your back, just as I thought, nothing but a sorry dirty Huckster. The Prince turned on his heels and left, and you stood there gaping. Who would have imagined that this steel ridden machine could approach a seasoned ranger unnoticed? Somebody tapped you on the shoulder and you turned, it was one of the cooks. Are you that very Malak who serves a Malak Scarecrow at dinner? He asked. Not the Malak Scarecrow, but the Dolphin and Space Fleet General. I guess I should pass your words to him. The Prince was kind of sorry that they did not serve him a piece of fresh, bleeding meat. I am sorry, the cook apologized. I have a proposal for you and maybe you will hear me out. Listen to what the cook has to offer, okay? 
The point is that this whole banquet is organized in accordance with the Malak traditions, but what they do not have is a main Malak dish or rather drink. We just did not have enough time to get the Kinza, but I did manage to find the recipe of this traditional Malak alcoholic drink as well as all of the necessary components. Me personally, I would never risk taking upon a known meal, but if you manage to mix everything in the correct proportions, you will certainly make a very good impression on the prince. And if you then teach me to make chins, I will pay you 500 credits for the instructions. So what do you say? Wow, so this is another involving chemistry problem or math problem. All right, let's go. Let's just go full bore and dig the depths of this mission to see what they have to offer. I do need to gain the more trust from the prince. Uh, all right, give me the recipe and the ingredients. Let's make some tequila boom for this kaboom. All right, so there's a bit... Uh, Tequila boom for kaboom. There is a very uh, there's a nice ring to it. Excellent. Here you go. The recipe could not be simpler. Take barmy faryuk juice and add the same amount of other components so that the relative composition of the main properties was optimized. So yes, I forgot to say that for Malak moonshiners, the quality of alcohol drinks is determined by the relative composition of three main properties: strength or alcohol containing levels of transparency and specific carbonation. Okay, so alcohol, transparency and carbonation. For instance, a quality chains is supposed to be 55% plus strong. Uh, okay, the strong have a transparency of 80% and carbonation is not to exceed 10 units. The use components are Diethyl methyl chlorine repositor, or simply repositor, thank you, which I used to dissolve bubbles there. Pasteurized hydrogen oxide, or the so called boiled water, okay, so that's how they call boiled water uh, in the far, far flung out universe. Use to dilute strong and dark drinks. Hip hops root tincture, also known as hip hops, an alcohol containing juice of this plant is dark in color. F's Absorbulator pyrobutan neprostench or simply absorblob destroys sediments and mineral adents. The recipe that I am going to give you has a more detailed description but sadly enough it does not specify the quantities. It only says that for 10 cubes of wine you should use the same amount of all other components. Um, 10 cubes of wine requires the same number amount of all other components. Okay, that is a total of 10 cubes. Yeah, but I think you're gonna do just fine. Mark it. I only have 5 cubes of each component, which should be sufficient but only for one portion of chains, so choose carefully. So 5 components of all this alcohol, uh, not alcohol, but ripple cedar, boiled water, hip hops, and absorb love. Okay. So this destroy sediment. I wonder what all this mean. I need to mix this, but I'm not so sure or not too understanding of what their effects are going to be on the final you know composition of the drink. I call it juice and brown. Dilute this for dilution. And dissolve bubbles of air, probably that related to carbonation. Alright. Start. So you have five of these, and this is how they work. A is strength negative five, transparency plus twelve, carbonation negative five. H is strength plus fifteen, transparency negative seven, carbonation plus three. Strength is plus three, transparency uh, minus two, carbonation minus eight. And W strength negative ten, transparency plus ten, carbonation plus ten. Ah, okay, so yeah, HRW is the ingredient. Basically, the first letter of the ingredients they have. So, by adding 10 ccm of this component into the fire juice, you should make chins that would correspond to the following parameters. So, strength not less than 55%. So, it has to stay above 55%. Transparency not less than 80%. Um, Alright, so it has to be above 80%. And NTE is not to exceed. Uh, I don't know how I knew that, but yeah, NTE 10 units. Okay, uh, alright, so let's add some hip hops. Alright, okay. 
I did add hip hops. So what is happening? Oh, okay, it's on the right side. Alcohol 25%, transparency 53%, carbonation 13 units. Okay, so I need to add one more hip hops. 40%, 46%, and some water. Uh, okay, so add water is basically going to destroy the, the alcohol. Repulsator is going to dissolve bubbles of air, so I think it's going to reduce carbonation. Dilution is uh, absorb love, right? So let's destroy sentiment. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, so I need to make it more than fifty-five percent. So I need to add some more of this. All right, fifty-five percent. Nineteen minutes transparency is pretty going down so I guess I will add absorb love all right and I think I need to add all this all right so four more I have added all of this and I need to add transparency hmm coronation has to go down a bit so uh, uh this yeah, it's going down uh, okay one more okay can i add 65 right yeah transparency 73 so i need to make sure that i get plus 10 i think yeah i think i'm going to make it by adding water it's going to be uh 55 percent and transparency is going to be 83 and carbonation is going to be 6. Yeah, looks like you're getting there. The cook took the cocktail you just made and let several droplets of it drip into the analyzer. Judging by the numbers that appear on the display of your impromptu turned out to be rather good chance. Ranger, please accept my congratulations on the successful completion of this experiment. The cook was dancing a delighted zig. He poured one third of it for himself and handed you 500 credits. I take the rest of this straight to the Prince Tardem and of course I mention the name of the maker of this masterpiece. I think the Malak will appreciate your creation. He jumped out of the kitchen mumbling something under his breath, either trying not to forget your name or attempting to memorize the process. So the process itself is just, I was at first trying to see if I can calculate this entire thing but I don't think it really required you to do anything in terms of math. Um, I mean, it was a process involved, but what you have to do it was just add all the, uh, what is it called, hip hops or something that increases alcohol and then try to adjust it uh, to get down to the levels of uh, carbonation and also increase the transparency uh, using the two, um, I didn't write it down, I should have written it down, but probably it's all random anyways every time I start the mission, so I think the alcohol was basically a uh, the first requirement that I went for and apparently it worked out all right so all right finally wow man I'm tired of reading all these walls of text and uh, yeah I mean it has been already past an hour since I started this text quest so maybe I continue this mission in the next episode um, yeah I mean I am doing rather well it seems despite all the little mistakes that I made uh, I definitely could have gone a bit better I think at least the princess relation is has gone from distrust to normal and I already have gained the interest of the wife, so that's pretty good. Alright, so thank you for watching and joining me on this very <laughs> extensive and exhaustive adventure. Hope you can see you next time as well. Until then, please stay tuned.